These AI content creation tools are so good that it's making the Terminator jealous. Get those tools out of here. Relax, big guy, okay? These are just helpful tools that allow creators to create content more efficiently. Get them out of here. No, I'm not gonna get them out of here. This is my video, dude. Look, it's Sarah O'Connor. I'll be back. Okay, so I don't know how long we're gonna have, but let's dive into these three insanely powerful AI content creation tools. Now this first tool, it can clone your voice. It can transcribe videos in the matter of seconds. It can instantly remove filler words or silence in your videos. Those awkward pauses, those ums, those ahs, pff, gone. It can create almost instant auto captions. It's called Descript. So what would you use this tool for and what would you maybe not use it for? First of all, it's amazing for just throwing a video in there and grabbing the transcription in the matter of seconds and then using that transcription to create the copy for the video, a blog post, newsletter, LinkedIn post, a ton of different things. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a second with one of the other tools. But I also like it for just a very simple editing software. Now this is not gonna give you the really cool transitions and animations and graphics that you see in a lot of videos out there. But if you're looking for something simple or maybe you're just getting into videos and you kinda wanna get a feel for them before you start spending money on editors and production, or maybe you've got an in-house content director or social media manager that's not a trained professional video editor, but they can dive in this platform and within a matter of minutes, understand how all of this works and how to create good video clips. One of the things I love about it too is when you plug in a video Video, and let's say you want to cut out a piece of the video. Maybe there's a couple sentences in there that you're like, oh, I didn't mean to say that, or I misspoke there. I, it was a wrong number, whatever it might be. I can remove that part of the transcription and it automatically removes that part of the video. So they go hand in hand. Anything you adjust in the transcription then gets edited from the video. Now the cloning your voice part is pretty crazy too. We haven't done a ton of work with this, but we did try it out in a video and this is what it sounded like. I can plug in this podcast and then... Alex, I'm gonna have your voice. Right? I can, I can mimic your voice. Pretty crazy, right? Especially given the fact that we're so early in this. Imagine what this is gonna be like a year from now, two years, three years from now. So again, I think it's great for maybe an in-house content director to use for basic video editing. This is definitely good for someone that wants to do it themselves and is not a professional video editor. What it's not good for is obviously advanced video editing. It doesn't have the best timeline capabilities. So if you're looking to break down a bunch of clips in here, you can actually do that. You can break down different clips from a macro, but the functionality is not the absolute best on it. And so overall, if we compare it to some of the video editing tools out there, the advanced ones, it's obviously going to fall short, but that's not what it's made for. It's made for the things that I just talked about. Number two, this next tool, you drop a long form video in this AI software. And in a matter of minutes, it goes through the entire long form video, chops up and curates a bunch of clips for you. It ensures that each one has a good starting point or what they would call a hook. And they try to piece together a good message for each one of the clips. It's all done in a matter of minutes. So literally I plug in one long form video and I get 13 clips back that can be posted on TikTok, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts, LinkedIn, because not only do they pull the clips and curate the clips, but they also edit the actual video themselves. So they'll provide the auto captions. You can mix in and change colors. You have an option to either keep in emojis or take out the emojis. You can change the font size, the lettering. You can now add in graphics and pictures. And there's a ton of other features that they're literally adding every single week. This tool is called Opus Clip. Now, if I've never heard of this before and someone was telling me like I'm telling you right now, my first question would be, how good are the actual clips? And are the hooks good enough at the beginning of the clips to actually reel in the audience's attention, to actually hook them in? And my answer to that question right now is it's not great, but it's getting better. So let's say, for example, I plug in a long form video and I get 13 clips, typically three to four of them I could probably use. You know, the editing is very basic. So for us, we're gonna do more advanced level editing to try to reel the audience in and create some edutainment aspects to it. But for some simple short form videos, it gets the job done. But if I get three to four clips, that means the other nine or 10 or whatever it might be, I really just can't use. Now you can get in there and change the start point of the video and the end point of the video. So you have a little bit of flexibility there. So what is this good for? I think again, this is good for a content director or a social media manager that is getting a lot of long form videos and maybe they don't have an editor on staff yet. And from a time management standpoint and an efficiency standpoint, it's easier to plug this long form in there and maybe they pick the best three to five to six clips and use those. And you also can use it for shorter form videos where it's just more of an editing tool at that point. And I also think 
think it can be potentially good for the do-it-yourself folks. Again, I always think about this stuff. This is where it's at today. So don't go in there and use it and be like, oh, the clips weren't very good, the hooks suck. Yeah, they're not gonna be where they're gonna be at six months from now, a year from now, two years, five years from now. So one of the most important things you can do with AI as it relates to content creation is start actually using the tools, understanding how the AI works and how you can train it and what prompts to put in, how to add context. You gotta study up on this stuff because one day it is going to be really good. And if you're starting from ground zero and you've never used it at all and never built these skills, you're gonna be behind. Plus, isn't it just fun and pretty cool to learn about this stuff? I mean, to me, I'm always excited to see a new tool. I'm always excited to see, oh, wow, I can use AI for this, I can use it for this. I'm always looking for efficiencies. I'm not looking for it to replace me or replace our team or human beings in general, but I am looking at it as a way to do my job more efficiently, as a way to spend more time in creativity or with customers or with other aspects and less time on the boring kind of mundane tasks that we'd rather have AI do. And finally, number three, this last tool, I guarantee that you've heard of it before. When I say the name, you're gonna be like, yep, yeah, I know that one, but most people have no clue how to use this to its fullest potential. And I'm gonna give you a few things in here that we personally use it for that are gonna change the way you look at this tool, which is called ChatGPT. So I'm gonna give you a few different use cases for this, and a couple of them we actually use every single week in our content creation workflow. One of my favorite things to do from an efficiency standpoint is I will make a long form YouTube video. I will plug it in Descript, which is what we just talked about earlier. That'll transcribe the entire video. I'll copy and paste it, and then I'll give ChatGPT a prompt and some context in order for it to turn it into a newsletter and a blog. I tell ChatGPT, hey, I'm gonna give you a transcription for a YouTube video. What I would like you to do is create a detailed YouTube description to add for the video along with relevant hashtags. This should be written like you're talking directly to the audience, do not reference the quote speaker. That's important to put in there because sometimes I'll be like, the speaker wanted you to realize that it does. It's like, no, you gotta tell it how to write. I want you to write like you are the speaker of this video because I want it to write like me, right? For context, we're a video content training company and want to ensure we optimize for SEO as best as possible. Do you understand this request? If so, I will send you the transcription to use. Now I could also add in here our target audience audiences five to $50 million a year businesses in the B2B space and their X, Y, and Z persona. Here's their demographic, psychographics. We really could load this thing up with detail and context, but I'm just giving you an example for now. This is pretty close to what I use and it's worked quite well. Chat GPT will then agree and then it asks for the transcription. I give it the transcription and then poof, I've got my YouTube description and I basically use that and I just tweak a couple things with the prompt to create the newsletter and the blog. So for that one, it's more laying the foundation, right? I've got this transcription, I've got these ideas, these subjects, this content. Just map it out for me. Give me like an outline, right? It's almost like it's writing a paper for me. Just give me the paper and then I'll go in and tweak things. I'll go in and change things. I'll change the hook or I'll change how you started that sentence. Or I may need to go back and say, hey, this tone of voice was X. I need it in Y tone of voice. And that's something I definitely could include right away on the prompt. I could say, hey, write it in this tone of voice. This is gonna be shown to these type of people. I want it to be a little bit playful, but also kind of professional. Now here's another use case. And we use this pretty frequently too, just to get some ideas flowing. I would like you to give me 50 unique titles for a YouTube video about video content strategy or about LinkedIn or whatever it is or whatever your area of expertise is, it doesn't matter. It's important that the title does two things. One, it lets the viewer know what the video is about. Two, it's so interesting and eye-catching that it makes them have to watch the video. Each title needs to be only five words or less. If I tell you what the video is about, can you complete this request? It'll say yes, boom. Now again, this is great just to get some ideas flowing. If you're stuck on something, you're like, I just, I got nothing good coming to me. And I may not even use these titles it gives me. I may combine a couple. I may see one word, this happens all the time. I see one word in that list of 50 or 25 or whatever it is. And that one word creates a chain reaction in my brain and my mind goes, ooh, what about if I go this direction? So it's almost like having a mini human there just like throwing ideas and creativity out for you and kind of helping create some of the foundational type stuff. Another one that you might like, and when I show this to people, it usually blows their mind. Can you build me out a content calendar for the entire month around these three topics? I'm just gonna use these examples here. How to win customers on LinkedIn, why using video content is so important for small to medium sized businesses, and number three, using edutainment content to stand out on social and attract your dream clients. Now it's important to give it some context too, right? So I want each topic to have an engaging hook or first sentence to go along with it. That hook should clue the audience in as to what the video is about, but not give it away either. It should create a lot of curiosity and make them wanna keep watching. For each one of the topics, I also wanna share customer success stories, personal journey stories of me, strategies, tactics, techniques, and even skit videos as well. That's very important, because if I don't include that, it's gonna give me what it thinks I want in terms of content, but I wanna kinda tailor it in and make it more focused. I gotta, again, train the AI a little bit here. For context, we're a video content training company. We're 
trying to attract companies doing five to $50 million in revenue a year and are active on LinkedIn. Now, again, I could add on the voice here, please take this tone of voice or use this type of language, whatever it might be. And this is what it gives me. And again, you're gonna have some things that you take and use, some things that you're like, yeah, I'm gonna scrap that one. And other ones that you just see certain words or phrases and you go, you know what? I wouldn't use that exact thing, but that just gave me another idea for something. This is really interesting. Now you notice when it first populates, it doesn't give me those columns. It doesn't make it really look or feel like a calendar. So I go back in there, and this is what you gotta do with AI too, is just re-instruct it. Say, hey, that was great, but give me this instead. Or hey, can you retry it doing these three things instead? So I just tell it, hey, build it out like you would a calendar, make columns in there. And then what it did is it shortened my hook. It took away my hook and I said, no, leave the hook in there from the original one, but tailor it out like it's a calendar. And then it did it. Now we're just scratching the surface with all these AI tools, right? You can go much, much deeper. And again, the importance of you diving in there and really trying these different tools, learning how the AI works. This is gonna be a part of our society for a long time.